Alrighty, so today I'm gonna finally show you some of the plugins that I've been using to enhance my Instagram Reels for clients. Recently, Motion VFX reached out to me and asked if I wanted to take a look at their brand new Cine Studio Pack. And I say it's a pack because it's sort of a combination of a bunch of different plugins that they're now offering. And two of the newest plugins, which is Roto AI and surface tracking is what I'm most interested in. Now I do wanna make mention that this is a paid plugin, that these are not free plugins. They do offer a quarterly and yearly subscription for these. And yes, I did have to pay for these. They did give me a trial at first, but that trial ran out and I did go ahead and purchase it. Now I wanna talk about my overall experience with these and how I've been implementing them into my real estate workflow. If you're somebody who films real estate, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around and you're probably gonna wanna buy these plugins because they've definitely been pretty damn handy, at least for me. Let's get started. All right, so about a month and a half ago, I ended up switching over to Final Cut Pro. I couldn't deny it anymore. Final Cut Pro, when it comes to real estate, is just a lot more useful than I gave it any credit for. And I've been using Motion VFX plugins for the past year and a half for property lines, basically exporting frames out of Premiere Pro, bringing it into Final Cut Pro. And that workflow is very cumbersome and incredibly taxing, and I finally had to make a change. And with the introduction of Cine Studio, it was finally time to just commit to using Final Cut Pro full time. And it's been, like I said, a month and a half, and it's been a fantastic experience. So in Cine Studio, there are two new plugins. There's a couple of plugins in this bundle, but the two we're gonna focus on is Roto AI, which is a very unique AI masking utility, and surface tracking, which allows you to track any surface and also contour to that surface's different flex and different shapes. Hard to explain, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples of me using surface tracking to add fire, to add TV replacements, and yes, you can even give yourself a tattoo if you found use for that. But let's jump into it and talk about the surface tracking first. So what I have here is a reel that I did for a client, and I, I try to make these reels as interesting as possible. And as I expand through this, one of the things we have here is this TV on the wall. Now this TV is a fake TV. It's not a real TV at all, it's fake. And what I did was is I used surface tracking to add the client's logo into the TV and track it, and if I play this back, and I'm just gonna mute this audio. If I play this back, the TV then go ahead and like sort of statics out. Now I had to make this sort of video before I brought it into Final Cut Pro because unfortunately I haven't found a way to green screen items or use Luma keys on top of surface tracking. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm sure I could use like a, a compound clip to make that work. But essentially what I had to do was I made this clip, figured out how long I wanted it, and then added it in. And then what I did was I used surface tracking to actually make this work. And if I go over to my effects window here, you can see I have surface tracking. If I turn this off, this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like on. And I actually have two instances of surface tracking on here. So let me turn surface tracking all the way off. This is with the surface tracking off. And if I turn surface tracking on, this is what it looks like and you can see it's on and off. And the way this works is essentially, when you click on Surface Tracker, you can see I have a tracking window here, I have an image, and I've laid out points on this image. And then I hit Tracker and let it track forward. It's really super easy to do, and just so I can show you how easy this actually is, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the Surface Tracker completely off of this clip, and then I'm gonna go ahead and re-add Surface Tracker uh, back to the clip. So easiest thing to do if you're going to do this, what you're gonna to wanna to do is zoom in on the clip and usually 100% or whatever surface object you're doing, um, you don't have to do too much. Sometimes a little closer may work, like 150% probably will be the best bet. So that way you can track the edges. And if it's a TV, like a square object, pretty easy. You wanna get as close to the edge of this as possible and right at about there, and then we're gonna go all the way over. And with a black TV like this, it is a little bit harder to do, but we just wanna make sure we get the absolute outline. And of course, if it's not perfect, you can go ahead and fix this later on. You can feather it if you need to. And then once you have the track set, 
you don't want to move. You don't want to move at all. The next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and add your image into here. So there's a little drop zone in the right hand corner. You're going to click on this drop zone, find whatever image it, image it is um, that you want. So in this case, I'm going to use the fire screen and I'm just going to hit apply to clip. Now, when it applies it to the clip, it's going to be fully expanded. So you want to scale this down to the size of your clip. So to do that, there's a little scale window over here. It says pan and scale. It's hidden. You just need to expand that. And then from there, you just want to go ahead and scale this to whatever size you need. And, and something like that is probably about right. And then from there, I can click on this little image icon. And the only thing I don't like about this is that it is so big, it makes it a little bit harder to maneuver this. Like I can't I can't really do much with it unless I click fit to screen, then I can get access to rotating it. And basically what I want to do is just rotate it to where I just get it to look like it actually belongs. And it may need some additional scaling, but I think that looks pretty good just like that. So next thing we do is we open up the tracker window. And then you want to make sure you track backwards first. Again, not moving the mouse. You want to track backwards because that's really important. And then you want to make sure you track forwards. And what this is basically going to do is make sure both front and backwards tracking is enabled. Another really good thing you could do is if you are going to do this is to make sure you start from the very beginning beginning of the clip. A little bit of a tongue twister there. So if I go back to here, I'm going to hit forward and just track it one more time. You can see it's moving super quick tracking. This is not like an intensive process that needs a lot of thought. This is tracking super easy. But um, yeah, we'll let this do its thing. It's tracking through. Perfect. And let's go ahead and hit play on that. And you can see that looks great. Like it looks pretty believable, but we can make this even more believable by adding some effects to it. So the first thing we can do is click on this little effects icon and then go ahead and find the white balance of the scene. So here's the white object. We're just going to click on that and that will subtly just change the white balance. The next thing we can do is use this wraparound lighting to go ahead and add some wraparound light. So I don't know if you can see the screen, but it's adding some actual natural lighting to it, or it would appear to be natural lighting to the scene. And that looks, I think that looks pretty good right there. And if we go over to this window here, back where we actually applied the effect to, we can then dial back the opacity a little bit to make it even more believable. And then, of course, we can change the blend mode when anytime I'm replacing a TV screen, I like to use the screen for the blending mode. It just looks really natural. And then the last thing I like to do is if I'm dealing with a TV like this, I change the mask to black and you can see how much better that looks by getting rid of that black line. That's what it looks like. And let's just play this back. I know it's super subtle, but it's a nice little Easter egg that you can add into a client's video to make it just that much more interesting. Another cool thing about the surface tracking is you can add fire to fireplaces, which I've done on a couple of videos. You can do TV replacements. You can add branding to a bed or a pillow. So let's say you have a brokerage. They have a really unique logo. You can add that right onto the pillow and make it look like it belonged. I've even been so subtle to add the branding to like coasters or or cups that an agent was holding. So the possibilities are endless. I really love Surface Tracker. And if you wanted to, you can even give yourself a tattoo and it will literally conform to your face just like it is right now. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's go ahead and talk about probably my favorite new plugin, which is Roto AI. Alrighty, so Roto AI is a brand new plugin that allows you to do masking automatically. If you've ever tried to mask a subject, you'll know that it's incredibly challenging to mask things and do the keyframing. It takes a long time, but what if there was an easier way to take out some of that guesswork and to get a perfect shape just about every time you do a keyframe? Well, with Roto AI, you can do just that. So I recently did a property um, out in Ozello and I usually always have my text for the property like one of the first things on the image. Well, take a look at this. As I'm coming through here where we have this little tree limb, notice that the text is perfectly behind the plant. Now, how did we accomplish this? Well, if we click on the plant, and I go ahead and just turn off the layer beneath it, you can see I was able to perfectly mask this little tree limb, feather it, track it perfectly, absolutely perfectly, which is insane. There would have been no way in Premiere Pro 
or any other platform, I would be able to do this with this much ease and this much precision. It's, it's, it's damn near impossible to do. And the possibilities don't really stop with this. You're also able to, let's say if I wanted to change this particular subject's color and I just wanted to just change the saturation possibly on this image, I can go to my color wheels, change my midtones, change the saturation of just this particular item here, just like that and give it a lot more pop, or even change the color of this particular plant. But if I turn this back on, you can see that now that plant pops even that much more because I'm just isolating the masking to this. Now the way this works, if I delete this layer here, and I come down here to where we have the Roto AI plugin, I've actually removed it completely from here. So what we need to do is type in Roto, and it's gonna come up Roto AI. You just simply paste it to this, uh, to this clip, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate my layer. And I'm just gonna drag it right up top. And then I'm gonna turn the layer off beneath. And now what we'll do is we'll go to the Roto AI uh, plugin, make sure we select it. You have a little tool here. And this is a little marker in which you can just sort of paint. And that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna just paint onto your image, whatever it is that you're wanting to mask, you're just gonna simply paint. And this can be a little bit tedious. But as you start painting, you'll see that it's smart enough to know where you need things to start completing. And again, just like before, you can always zoom into an object to make this a little bit easier. Unfortunately, you can't really adjust the brush size to make it much easier, but I think for the most part, this works really well. It's really smart in knowing what it needs to pick up on. Like you can see, I'm directly on these leaves. And if I just do enough of this, it should automatically be able to pick up on the color. And you can see, again, it's pretty smart. It's picking up on the color. And we'll get more of that. Cool. And then we'll get this branch here. Make sure we get all of this. And you don't have to be too accurate with it. You just don't want to bleed over too far. But if you do bleed over too far, you can go ahead and erase things. There is an eraser tool which will allow you to take some of this mask away, which will happen from time to time. It's pretty smart. It's not as smart as painting it on, but it does work pretty well. You do just wanna make sure you get as much of this as possible because if you're tracking and you're gonna put something behind, it may not be able to track things as effectively without making sure everything is masked. So I'm just gonna keep painting this leave and just make sure we get all this without being uh, too careful here, I guess. There we go, there it's just like that. That's pretty good. And then we got this little stem coming off here don't have to be too precise you can see it's getting most of it all right so now once we have this leaf completely masked and we got a little bit more that we have to paint in there we go and a little bit here you really want to make sure you do the best you can of painting it you can adjust things a little bit further like you can adjust the smoothness that's going to adjust how smooth this mask actually is you can also adjust the expansion like if i needed it to expand a little bit more which i think right about there is pretty good and i also noticed that I had a little bit missing there, so we're gonna do that. There we go, that's perfect. All right, and now what we can do, we can also choose how fast or accurate it actually tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the accurate, but if I do that, it will clear the it will clear my masking path. So I don't wanna do that, because that's just a lot to mask. I used the fast one before, and it worked fine. I'm gonna pull up the tracker window. I'm gonna track it forward. And now what it will do is it will track just the mask and you gotta pay attention to as it's tracking because sometimes it misses something and you need to stop it, remask that area, repaint that area and then restart the track. So it's not always perfect, but it, again, it's way faster than keyframing. To be able to keyframe this, it would just be damn near impossible. So now what I'm gonna do is keyframe it all the way back, let it track backwards now, making sure that it's getting the mask all the way through. And then what I'm going to do is take my, my keyframe head and move it all the way back and then track it forward one more time. And this just ensures that I cover the entire plant. And then what we can do is we can check the layer. So right now it's set to merge. So it's masking and it's merging what we've covered into one file essentially. So there's multiple ways you can do this, but that's why I duplicate the layers. It makes things a little bit easier to see. So and this is going pretty quick, and honestly, the super accurate portion isn't that much fat, slower, to be honest. I mean, you can use either or, but like I said, this is working just fine for what we're doing. So perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll change this from merged 
to masked video. And that's just gonna show us what we've masked. And you can see the text is perfectly behind the plant. And then if we turn this back on, you can see voila, we now have something very, very interesting looking here. And if we play that back, it just looks insane. And I did it on this clip right here. I went behind the little pillar. Again, masking before this utility was keyframing. But I would never, 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 never in a million years try to attempt this. I just want to go ahead and zoom in here for a second just so you can see the level of detail and accuracy. It's pretty crazy and it looks awesome and it's the little things that maybe clients will notice, maybe they won't, but your colleagues and professionals like myself, they'll notice these little details and it just, it just elevates your video to be that much more interesting. And you can see there was no skill involved. It's just painting it on like you're coloring in a color book. All right, so those are my two new favorite plugins from Motion VFX. There's gonna be a link in the description below where you can go ahead and check this out for yourself. I will forewarn you, this is not a cheap plugin, but the results that this creates is not cheap either. These look super professional. And like I said, you can make your money back relatively quickly if you're in this industry like myself where you're doing this type of work for clients. So right now I am paying for Motion VFX quarterly. I think it's like $117 every quarter, which sounds expensive, but at the end of the year for me, it's just a write-off. It's $400 a year, I really don't care. I'm happy to pay it to save me the aggravation of being able to do masking this effortlessly. And that's really what it all boils down to. Now, if you want a tutorial on how I do this intro transition, be sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be showing you how to use Roto AI to do these build-in transitions, which seem to be the latest craze in real estate. Before Roto AI, you would have to mask something after you did a frame hold, but now with this being able to track the mask so easily, you no longer have to use frame hold, which elevates your edit even higher above the rest. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Links for Motion VFX Cine Studio bundle is down below. Be sure to check it out if you're a Final Cut Pro editor. I will see you in the next tutorial and video. As always, stay original. Uh. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, you know, flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessing for me, my successes only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in the...